great to be with you all, Shane. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, thanks, Matt, and all the presenters. It's great to be with you all today. My name is Reed Schmidling. Uh, I'm going to do a little talk a little bit about myself here in a second, but I think without saying, you know, I have to start with thanking all of you. Uh, thank you to all the folks at Microsoft for facilitating this call on a monthly basis. I'm pretty fairly new to the community, so I've already received a lot of value. It's inspiring to see all the presentations and the demos, uh, and definitely pushes me to want to learn more about Power Platform and N365 and expand my capabilities. So, you know, that obviously includes everyone in the community because y'all are so supportive to all the folks at Microsoft. Thank you so much. So y'all are rock stars. Okay, so diving a little bit about myself. Uh, so I actually, that's my wife and I and uh, our brand new son, Leo. I thought that one was pretty funny because we were trying to take a family Christmas photo and he's uh, was a little upset. So uh, most of my life revolves around being a new dad uh, and obviously Sporting Kansas City supporter, go Wiz, coming off a nice win over the weekend. Uh, I currently work for Centene. I'm a senior business intelligence engineer. Uh, and primarily in the end user experience space. So deal with a lot of end user feedback, sentiment, uh, and a lot of um, user experience data. Uh, so I'm fairly new to Power Platform. Uh, historically, I do come from finance. I actually have no technical background other than what I've learned up to this point. So I started dabbling in Power Platform just about a year ago. And, you know, starting... 2024, I was like, you know, this year I'm going to get out and start sharing some of my work and sharing some of the things I do and really evolve. So, and I'm just privileged to be with all of you here today to um, share some of that. Okay. So, just to kind of do a little run through of today, I'm um, going to walk through a couple Power Automate flows, do a slight demo, and then hopefully even share some enhancements and alternatives if y'all are looking to implement something similar. So, Without further ado, our favorite time, <laughs> the demo time. And so I had to throw in Taylor Swift. Uh, my wife is a huge Swifty, so I thought I'd throw in a fun little uh, Taylor uh, gift to uh, get this going. So I'm going to stop sharing and then flip over to um, my Power Automate phones here to switch the window. Awesome. So. A lot of the work that we do and um, inside my role is talking with end users. Like, how are they experiencing technology? And, you know, if you don't want to apply this to your situation, you know, if you have a group of UAT testers and you're looking to get feedback, uh, I've kind of built a system in Microsoft Teams that helps facilitate the ability to better track feedback and track engagement. So that's from, you know, what are, what are individuals saying? What kind of comments are they making? So kind of starting at square one, kind of starting at the basics, you know, triggering based on when new posts are made. Um, now I did build, I'll kind of be going into um, the prompts and models that I did build through AI Builder uh, to help kind of classify or determine what topic uh, is being discussed in the post or reply. And then obviously, you know, we have a great uh, storage solution with Dataverse to store all this data, which I'll, kind of dig into uh, uh, and so outside of the topic you know also grabbing the classification and sentiment and then obviously storing that information in our lovely dataverse table now taking it to step two obviously we can get all the posts but what about that engagement underneath the post what about all those replies we got something for you there too um, we got you know using and calling Graph API to get those uh, replies underneath those posts uh, to kind of get that back and forth engagement. And, you know, are, are people getting their questions answered? Um, there, what we found in a lot of the communities and teams that we've run is there's a lot more engagement under the posts in the replies than in the posts themselves. So I think we kind of came up with a really good solution here. Uh, one thing I wanted to call out that we found very helpful is after we extract messages, filtering out those deleted. So in the output from getting different channel messages, we found that the deleted ones will creep in. So if you can actually come in here and filter those out on the onset, 
and then just get those messages that uh, you know if someone made a mistake and oh I don't want to ask that question anymore they delete it you know just filter we can filter those out real quick and we're we're doing the same process here we got we're running it through our our same prompts and models storing it in the tables um, and another kind of constraint that we ran into is obviously there's a limit to the number of replies that we'll receive back as a part of the graph api call um, so there's we did kind of find the solution through looping through each one and luckily enough if you get the o data next link plug that in as dynamic content it'll give you the next set of replies which is great and easy love it easy plug and play okay and last but not least why not get those reactions to the messages and replies and that's what we're cleaning up with so we got the post we got the replies you know what if what if someone wants to amplify that post through a love or you know a heart or a thumbs up or you know even a mean face <laughs> luckily we got a solution here to get those reactions so kind of same idea we're getting those messages we're going to filter out those that were deleted since those kind of can get uh, brought through now works a little different here um in the response when you are extracting uh reactions to different messages and replies um it only the display name doesn't come through properly or at least it wasn't through for our testing so we do have this get user profile where we're getting the uh object id for the individual or the user id to then convert that to then properly just uh store their name like who reacted what kind of reaction was had okay uh, i want to quickly run through um the prompts that we created to help uh, kind of facilitate and help determine topics so this is just a, a brief example um you know in these as i was kind of building out this example for this demo i was like yeah let's let's have fun let's uh let's plug in all of the uh you know, different some microsoft applications will we'll track um the microsoft suite and any feedback on those so um we kind of built this prompt took a lot of trial and error to really hone in on you know getting some good data out of the prompt in all the model uh but i think what we had discovered here works great uh it worked for us very accurate clean works Okay, and then lastly, we wanted to find a way, okay, how can we track when someone is asking a question, uh, offering a suggestion to another member or user in the community, or just question, suggestion, comment. And what we had found building this prompt uh, actually provided a lot of great insight because you know once we, now we have this data, we're storing it, how can we report on it? How can we you know, make sure that the questions are getting answered and make sure there's coverage? So this one has actually proven quite valuable. Uh, and actually just, there's a pull request up in this one that just got approved by April. So if you wanna check out this one, uh, go to uh, the repo uh, and you can check this one out further. Uh, there's a similar one to that. Okay. And la uh, two more quick things. I, I know we have six minutes left, but wanted to quickly, Kind of show through the example of what the table actually looks like where we're storing this information or what we're getting so kind of some pretty basic information message id the data was posted name you know what type of was it a post reply reaction the message itself you know the reaction type you know if they're hearty liking mean face and then this kind of where it gets into you know are they asking a question and what was the sentiment around it um we do have one other table that does track um the topics themselves so i'll quickly show that and we did what we did is we created a relationship with the two so then the two tables can talk back with each other so obviously in a lot of feedback you know some we were finding that users are wanted to talk about multiple things in a single post so we created a separate table created a relationship with the two so then we can um you know, obviously multiple topics can out come out of a message so um, we created a separate table and then tied the message id back to the messages table okay um one so one last thing i want to show and one thing that we're really piloting um 
with just having data and extracting data is summarizing it using AI through Copilot, AI builder using prompts. And that's uh, the one last thing I want to show because you know, if the data is just sitting in your dataverse, or even if we put it into, uh, you know, use Power BI to visualize it, or you know, however we want to consume it, you know, we did find that we wanted to kind of through some brainstorming, how could we get like a quick output to send to individuals like, okay, hey, what is being discussed in um, the community or in the team's channels? So I want to flip over to my team's chat here and obviously there's a lot of different ways you could do this i kind of just kept it simple you know you could i think it really just depends on the users you're working with and who's the audience for this type of solution to kind of get that summary uh you, you could go from usually just using the workflow chat with an adaptive card you know you can have it sent via email uh, you can if you want to create a call your own copilot bot inside teams to have it talk to you know there's a lot of great alternatives um we're currently testing and using adaptive cards in the workflow chat but you know we might you know here soon we might explore building a copilot but just for today i just wanted to keep it simple and just show you um you know some um uh just like how powerful it can be to get a nice summary and how AI can just make it so simple and easily to digest information from that. So then we're not wasting time you know, looking through all the data versus data, <laughs> all the messages, you know, okay, what are users talking about? Just use AI, plug the messages into AI. You, you can build a prompt, uh, build code, whatever you want to. But the AI summarization is so great. It's so concise. You know, it removes any duplicates. It just keeps it compact. And we've gotten some great feedback on it. So, um, again, there's a lot of different avenues where you could take the summary, but I definitely recommend it. Uh, definitely something that we're implementing more, you know, through dashboards and just general in like this case where, you know, you can, you know, have a chat bot. You can talk like, hey, you know, I want to learn more about what's being said about Microsoft Teams or uh, Power Platform. So a lot of cool stuff that you could do there that I wanted to show. So uh, that is it for me. I really appreciate everyone letting me demo today. Uh, thank you for the time.